Hello, my dear audience. Today we're gonna visit the house that was once owned by actress Gwyneth Paltrow and her then husband, Coldplay singer Chris Martin. The Garwood House is one of the least famous designs by Lautner, and about the history hardly anything is known. We do know that the house was built in 1972 and that it was a difficult design process, with the plans that were constantly changed, and the final result drastically compromised due to a lack of funds from the commissioners. To make matters worse, the house was then remodeled several times over the decades. This makes it questionable how little of John Lauder's design was still present in the latest version of the house and how much it deviated from his original plan. Paltrow and Martin bought the house in 2014, but after their divorce it was Chris Martin who decided to demolish his property in 2022. So unfortunately this house doesn't exist anymore and today only an empty building site reminds us of a once very interesting house. Therefore I made this video so that we can still take a look inside. The house was located in one of the most expensive parts of Malibu, near Point Doom and overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It was located next door to another interesting house, the Lever Morgenthaler residence by architect Bart Prince. Also a great design, but that will be the subject for another video. From the street only the entry gate was visible because the house itself was hidden behind tall hatches. Once you went through the entry gate, you had to go over a curving driveway that went past a private tennis court. Between this tennis court and the main house were a few garden sheds. At the end of the driveway was a carport. Once you had parked your car, you could walk behind it. And from there was a small pathway that went to the front door. But before we step inside, we first gonna take a look at the floor plan. We remove the roof and show the layout. We color the parts that are actually inside and then we name the separated spaces. Finally, we decorate the drawing with furniture to give an indication of the size and dimensions. Although the house had multiple entrances, there was only one official front door, which was located at the back side. From the carport, we walk to this front door. And we go through the hallway, where we step in the living room. In this room you could clearly see a number of red-brown pillars with trapezoidal capitals. To understand the function of these pillars, we must first take a look at the construction of the house. The first step in the construction process was to place concrete footings in the ground. Then a floor plate made of casted concrete was laid down over the entire length of the house. On this foundation a series of prefabricated steel columns was placed. Here you see the positioning of all the steel pillars in the floor plan. Each of the columns were holding two wooden beams over the length of the house, as you can see here on this drawing. The flat roof was resting horizontally on these pillars and beams. From above you can see that the capitals of the pillars support the roof in the width, while the beams do the same in the length. The great benefit of this construction is that the roof is supported independently from the rest of the house. This allows any wall to be made of glass. To bring even more sunlight in the middle of the living space, a clerestory was placed over the entire length of the house. 
on some places extra skylights were cut in the roof. A funny design detail was that the chimney also held two roof beams, forming another pillar but then made of bricks. We continue our walk through and from this door, the shape of which is determined by one of the trapezoidal capitals, we step outside, on the balcony. From here we walk around the living room. At the dining area we return back inside. Another benefit of the independent roof construction was that the internal walls had no load-bearing function. This allowed large open living spaces, giving the house a transparent character. Like the open kitchen next to the dining area. A part of the kitchen was placed in a glass alcove that rotated from underneath the roof, like a bay window. This door led to one of the two bedrooms. These two skylights came out here in the roof. While these four skylights are placed over the other bedroom, which was connected to the hallway next to the front door. These small windows looked out over a glass hallway. The entrance of this hallway was next to the kitchen and from here you could walk to the master bedroom and the studio. The panoramic windows had a maximum view over the landscape and the lines of the swimming pool created a perspective that led towards the ocean in the background. The bedroom had an interesting optical illusion in which the ocean looked closer than it actually was. Behind the pool the ground level descended rapidly and you saw hardly anything of the lower landscape. This created the illusion in which the ocean seemed to be directly behind the pool, while it was in reality almost 250 yards away. This effect was further enhanced by the water of the pebble stone swimming pool that had the same reflection and colors as the water of the ocean, giving you the feeling that you were sleeping on a beach with the ocean at your feet. On hot days you could sleep outside on a second bed, placed in line with the other bed. The master bedroom was sunlit in the rear through the clerestory. The bathroom had a jacuzzi in front of a window, so you could lay in bath while look at the garden. Especially at night the many windows made the house very transparent, with a roof that almost looked like it was floating. The sitting area on the edge of the terrace had a wall in the middle that always created a comfortable shadow. Depending on the moment of the day, you could sit in the shade at the left or right side of the wall. The house had one large room with no specific function. It could be used as a library, office or some kind of studio. It had no vertical windows and was only sunlit by four skylights and the Claire story. There was a door that went outside to the same pathway that led to the front door. Here you see that the house had a lower floor level. Because of the changes in the ground level, there was space for a gym under the living room. This gym was only accessible by a staircase on the outside to the right of the house.
In front of the gym was an outdoor kitchen with a cocktail bar. Just one stair lower on the hill was the outdoor steam cabin. Right from the steam cabin is a pathway that goes to the beach and is still existing today. Although the beach is not privately owned, it is enclosed by high cliffs and this makes it only accessible from the houses who are placed in front. So the beach is shared with the other neighbors. The private pathway is surrounded by tropical plants, creating the feeling of walking through a jungle. It has many sitting areas and there's even a bandstand from where you can give your own private concert. When you are descending over the enclosed trail, the beach comes closer step by step. This builds up the tension and finally the pathway breaks open into the ocean. We end our tour and take a look at the sunset. This was your tour guidance. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.